A series of cyber attacks are sparking some concerns this tax season. How you can keep your information out of the hands of scammers. And we had a very mild spring day Saturday. It'll be much of the same today, although it will be cloudier with a chance of rain. I'll have those details coming up in your SkyTrack 13 forecast. The flowers, the candy, it's sweet, smelly, and tasty. However, it's not quite as sweet for businesses. I'm Matt McCutcheon with why one local business estimates Valentine's sales will be down 20% this year. It's all coming up live on Sunrise. From Indiana's news leader, Eyewitness News Sunrise starts now. Good morning. Welcome to Sunrise. Time now, 9 o'clock on your Sunday morning. We're so thrilled that you're joining us today. I'm Naomi Peskovitz here with Kelly Green. You can see the radar behind us. There are some clouds around, but today we're going to see another beautiful warm day. Yes, it is definitely going to be mild and breezy and certainly more spring-like today, kind of taking a break from those winter blues. And here's a look from our Crawfordsville cam. And we do have temperatures that have been really holding steady in the upper 40s. Right now, 49 degrees in Indianapolis, 45 in Kokomo, 53 in Seymour, and 46 degrees in Richmond. And our current wind gusts have been around 32 miles per hour in Trafalgar. We've had a wind gust of 37 in Noblesville, 25 mile per hour wind gust in Greensburg. So yes, it has been very breezy. Those winds have been out of the southwest. The clouds have thickened up this morning, all related with this area of low pressure that will gradually move into the area as we head into the afternoon. So that will bring us a chance of some scattered showers. As we head into the afternoon, temperatures will gradually climb back into the low 50s, unseasonably mild, but it will bring us a chance of some scattered showers, mainly by late afternoon. So I'll have more uh, tracking of that as well as a big temperature swing coming up in your SkyTrack 13 forecast. Naomi? There are new concerns for people trying to file their tax returns after one of the most popular tax services had to stop temporarily. We told you yesterday that TurboTax had to stop state filings after reports of fraudulent returns. We talked with Attorney General Greg Zeller in our studios yesterday. He says the fraudulent returns could be traced back to recent data breaches like those at Target, Home Depot and Anthem. This is really a fraud against the government. They file a tax return on your behalf. They get the money and make off with it. You'll eventually get your tax return. TurboTax says there were no issues with federal tax returns because the IRS has stronger fraud detection. The parent company, Intuit, says there was no breach to its system. Marion County Democrats gathered this weekend for a pre-primary convention. Members of the Marion County Democratic Party selected endorsed candidates for the 2015 primary. Along, among those on the ballot, Joe Hogsett, he's the only declared Democrat running for Indianapolis mayor. The former federal prosecutor says his relationships with local, state and federal law enforcement will help in the mayor's office. I think that that kind of experience and those kinds of relationships will be able to put together uh, the type of law enforcement that is uh, worthy uh, of the residents of the city of Indianapolis that will help keep our streets safer uh, and our city more prosperous. And in addition to the mayor, there are also 25 city county council offices on the ballot this year. New on sunrise, a group of soldiers from the Indiana National Guard are on their way to Guantanamo Bay. Yesterday, the 38th Military Police Company said goodbye to their friends and family during a farewell ceremony. Indiana National Guard Chief of Joint Staff expressed his confidence in the departing soldiers, fulfilling their mission and representing Indiana's continued support to Operation Enduring Freedom. About 30 soldiers will head to Texas for some additional training before deploying to Cuba. Well, no one matched all six numbers in last night's massive Powerball drawing, so the jackpot keeps going up. This Wednesday's drawing will be worth an estimated $450 million, but you may have won a lesser prize during last night's drawing. We want to show you the numbers now. They are 34, 58, 5, 21, 10, and the Powerball. It's 33. Again, next Wednesday's drawing, now worth a whopping $450 million. Wow. A major economic boost is coming to businesses on Saturday as you celebrate love. 
Valentine's Day pumps millions into the economy and businesses are looking to rebound after last year's struggles. Sunrise reporter Matt McCutcheon is live with what hit them so hard last year and now what they're expecting this Valentine's Day. Hey Matt. Naomi, good morning. Of course, Valentine's Day is on Saturday and businesses here all along Mass Avenue are expecting to be very busy. That includes right here at Mesh where they're already booked solid for Saturday night and they already have a wait list of about a dozen people waiting to get inside. That pales dramatically in comparison to Valentine's Day of 2014. Here's what we dealt with, a painful memory, five inches of snow that fell across central Indiana on Valentine's Day of 2014. That Friday, you may remember it happened early in the afternoon and it just would not let up. That cost businesses a lot of money. Mesh, in fact, says they had about an 8% cancellation rate that night and florists said they struggled to get business orders rushed out the door during all of that snow when traffic moved so slow. And they also said they struggled with people stopping in after work to pick up flowers for their loved ones. This year, they're hoping for a different story. And this year, it's on a Saturday, so it'll be about 20% down just because it's on a Saturday and people do other things because women aren't at work on Saturday, so, you know, the big wow factor is gone. They hope that their sales will rebound during the week and that leading up to Saturday, more people will stop in and also call in orders to have it delivered to their loved one's place of employment. Now, as for retailers like florists, for example, they actually say Wednesday is the more ideal day to have Valentine's Day. That way there are more business orders or orders being rushed to businesses. As for restaurants, even though it's, they're excited about it being on Saturday, they say Sunday is the best day. That way everyone will want to go out Friday, Saturday, and of course on Sunday. I'm reporting live, Matt McCutcheon, Channel 13 Eyewitness News. Matt, thank you so much. Kelly Green back with me now to talk about your weather. And it doesn't feel like February out there, but by <laughs> next weekend it might. Yes, definitely. We're going to see more of those winter-like temperatures. So you definitely want to take advantage of it today. Of course, not as sunny today. In fact, we are tracking a chance of some rain. I'll have those details coming up on Sunrise. And at least 40 people are confirmed dead in that Trans-Asia plane crash. What the airline is doing this morning to ease the financial burden victims' families face as they prepare to bury their loved ones. Plus, folks in New England are saying deja vu. Yet another big snowfall expected in the area. We'll have more on the timing and how much they are expecting.
Another horrifying look now at that Asia plane crash last week. We're learning more this morning that the death toll has reached 40 and three people are still missing. Also new this morning, the airline is now distributing payments to families of the victims. $38,000 will go to each family to cover funeral costs. We're also seeing some new amazing video of a passenger knocking on the inside of the window during rescue efforts. Preliminary investigations indicate the pilots shut off a running engine after its other engine went idle last Wednesday. Six people are dead, including several children, after a man opened fire in a suburban Atlanta neighborhood before then turning the gun on himself. Police in Douglasville, Georgia, say the shooter appears to have targeted his ex-wife and his own family, including his children, who tried to run away. Horrified neighbors called 911. They tried to help the injured victims before rescuers arrived yesterday. A witness said the youngest victim was a toddler. Police near Pittsburgh have arrested a 17-year-old for a shooting at a mall Saturday night that wounded three people. The Monroeville Mall went on lockdown after gunfire was heard inside a Macy's store around 7.30. The three shooting victims, two men and a woman, were hospitalized. Police are not naming the suspect because he's a juvenile. He is expected to face charges of aggravated assault, attempted homicide, and reckless endangerment. More weather worries now for the West Coast after days of rain brought by the massive weather maker known as the Pineapple Express. New concerns for serious flooding, power outages, even mudslides as many communities prepare for even more. Dan Sheneman has the latest. All along the West Coast, torrential rainfall has inundated many communities. In Washington State, the town of Brennan at 1.30 inches underwater, the pounding rain forcing the river beyond its banks. We floated for a while and then got on high, high ground and then the, uh, we called 911 and had the fire department come out and they rescued us. We're surrounded by it. Homes are already flooded. About four inches now. And much more rain is expected in the coming days. All of this courtesy of the so-called Pineapple Express, a weather phenomenon that ushers a stream of tropical moisture stretching thousands of miles from Hawaii to the Pacific Northwest. San Francisco. Never seen it like this before. I walk here every day and it's just crazy. The blustery conditions with wind gusts of up to 60 miles per hour knock down trees, causing power outages to several thousand residents. In Oregon, much the same. Still, all of this rain will not put much of a dent in California's drought. With snowpack at just 25% of average and the state's largest reservoir more than half empty. Unwelcome news as communities brace for more rain on the way. Dan Sheneman, Channel 13 Eyewitness News. And from the West Coast to the East Coast, New England is gearing up for another round of snow today. People in Boston just finished digging out from the last snowstorm, which dumped two feet or more in some areas. The National Weather Service has issued another winter storm warning for all of Massachusetts. It'll be in effect through early Tuesday morning. 12 to 24 inches of fresh snow is forecast. Flurries will get heavier in the overnight hours and are expected to continue through Monday. And though we are expecting cooler temps in the next coming days, I don't think it's going to look anything like that. Yes, well, we are unseasonably warm today as well, so we'll take the warm temperatures and the breezy conditions with a chance of rain. And really, our Connorsville camera telling the story here. You can see the clouds overhead, and this is a live look. You can see the the on the um, flagpole here, the wind's really breezy. They have been gusting up to 30 miles per hour in many locations this morning. Here's a look from our Morris Reservoir Cam in Cicero. Still ice on top of the lake here. I do think a lot of this will continue to thaw out today, but we are going to see temperatures tumbling as we head into tomorrow. Details in just a moment on that, but it is currently 47 in Greensburg, 43 degrees in Marion, 45 in Crawfordsville, and 51 in Bloomington. And we're still seeing a little bit of sunshine this morning. It's currently 49 degrees. Winds are out of the southwest, sustained at 14 miles per hour right now. And our average high for today is right around 38 degrees. Yesterday, we got up to 55. Today, not quite as warm, and we're not going to be breaking any records today. This one goes back to 1937, 68 degrees, the record high for today. 
Now we'll still see temperatures climbing well above normal today, but then temperatures will begin to crash as we head into Monday. In the meantime, a mild day on tap. We do have those clouds that are around all associated with this area of low pressure, and this is going to be bringing in some of this light scattered showers, possibly even a wintry mix later on tonight. So I'll have a breakdown on that in just a moment here, but we have this area of low pressure, this counterclockwise flow, winds out of the southwest, and so that will continue to usher in that warmer air. The clouds will be around. It looks like it should stay dry through the early uh, afternoon, and then we have a chance of a few sprinkles, mainly later this afternoon. So temperatures will still have a chance to climb into those low 50s with winds out of the southwest from about 5 to 15 miles per hour. As we head into the evening, though, that's when we'll start to see a better chance of rain, especially in our southeastern viewing area. And then later on tonight, as temperatures begin to fall, any leftover precipitation could be in the form of a of snow. So we could see that rain changing over to a mix of rain and snow and then just snow into the early morning hours on Monday. So you'll want to check back with Sean tonight and then again on sunrise tomorrow with Chuck and Nicole. Temperatures fall to 28 degrees tomorrow morning. That chance of rain and snow mix. It will stay, stay breezy with those winds out of the west and then they'll shift out of the north. That will help usher in some colder air. Temperatures only climbing to 34, actually a few degrees below that average of 38 degrees. So we're definitely going to see these changes moving in. It will be mainly dry for Monday and Tuesday. And then another chance of precipitation moves in, but we're tracking a chance of rain Wednesday. And then much colder air moves in on Thursday and Friday with temperatures only climbing into the mid-20s. Kelly, thank you. Well, maybe you found your home of your dreams, you're ready to move, but you still have to sell your old home. That's why our real estate expert, Greg Cooper, is here with some things you need to know before you put your house on the market. A lot of these may seem very obvious, but they're not. I mean, these are th mistakes, common mistakes that people make. Well, if you're going to sell, there's some things that you got to do, and it's February, the clock's ticking, here you go. First and foremost, Clean it out. Find your most fanatical, neat freak friend <laughs> to have walk walk through your home. And if they tell you it's not clean, you're not quite ready yet. Like perhaps a mother. That might be a good person. Uh, mothers are very good at that generally, <laughs> yes. So you've got to deal with cleaning and then clutter. Here you go. Take about half the stuff in your home out and you're probably about ready to sell your property. People need to see their own things in your home to form an emotional attachment to it. Now everyone has their own taste, their mm -hmm. specific taste, but when you're selling a home, it's important not to put too much of your own thoughts into it. You know, I hear buyers complain most frequently about things like wallpaper. I mean, mm. I'm convinced that when selling a home, wallpaper is about the devil at the end <laughs> of the day. So declutter and obviously neutralize as much as you possibly can along the way. So you're thinking grays, beige, normal. Neutral colors so that people, again, can envision themselves in your home. Okay, and Greg, then you talk about a first impression. Why is that so important? Unbelievably important as people walk to the front of your home. Paint your front door, change out the door hardware, get spring flowers out there. I mean, we're heading for March not too far away. Get the pansies out by the front door, even if it seems early. You want to be forward thinking and you want to put on a great first impression as people walk up to the front of your property. And this might be the scariest part for some people, but making sure the finances are in check. As the calendar has turned January 1 and now beyond, there are a lot of new types of mortgages. There are new regulations on home mortgages. So you're going to want to make sure before you get anywhere along the road, you sit down with your mortgage person and make sure you understand completely where you stand and what it's going to take to get you to the finish line. Before you go, a, a quick question here. What's an appropriate amount of money someone should spend in fixing up their home before they sell it? It all depends on the price of your property, obviously, but I'm more about efficient. What's going to put dollars back on your pocket? So you're going to want to get a really good consultant to share with you the things that are most important versus things that you might spend money on that are not really going to return anything to you. So get a good advocate to help you stage and, and get your home ready as you prepare to do this. And it should be a good year to buy and sell, too. It's going to be a great year for housing here in Indiana. All right, Greg, thank you so much. We always appreciate you coming in. And his real estate update is always posted on our website, too, at WTHR.com. Just go to Hot Topics. Greg, thanks for joining great us today. To well, parents in Johnson County are hoping they won't have as much traveling to do for kids' soccer and baseball tournaments. That's because plans are in place for a new sports complex. Coming up, we'll show you those plans and the economic impact organizers hope it will have.
Welcome back. We hope you stay with us after sunrise today for Inside Indiana Business. Here's host Gary Dick with more on today's show. I'm Gary Dick. Coming up at 11 o'clock, the Hoosier Hot 50 jobs list is out from the Indiana Department of Workforce Development. It is the top 50, the highest paying jobs, the most in-demand jobs over the next 8 to 10 years. I asked Department of Workforce Development Commissioner Steve Braun about the challenges facing Indiana. Every site selection person will tell you out there that we've gotten a lot better in terms of our business climate. Our infrastructure has improved. The one area that we have not improved to the degree we need to for future purposes is workforce. And that's the number one priority for companies that are looking to locate and invest in Indiana. Much more on the hot jobs and what they are over the next decade or so. Plus, an Indianapolis-based health system trying to drive innovation from the hospital uh, to uh, commercialization. Community Launchpad has already generated more than 1,000 ideas, 18 ideas. Uh, companies are potentially in the pipeline. We'll have much more on that and a lot more coming up at 11 o'clock this morning inside Indiana Business. Central Indiana is getting another new outdoor sports complex. The zoning board has signed off on a plan to build the MVP Park in Bargersville. Eyewitness News reporter Jenny Renovich shows us what's coming in Johnson County and the economic impact they hope it brings. Let that ball get your front foot. For many Southside families, that's good. Playing ball is more than a game. Our daughter spends probably on average about three hours a week practicing in the off season. She does it all year round. It is a travel sport and 50 games a year are played out of town, even out of state. A lot of the tournaments are in Columbus, Shelbyville, as well as uh, you've got Westfield now with the large complex up there. That's why Ryan Richardson, nice shot. banking on the sports yeah. demand, spotted this field of dreams in Bargersville. 45 acres along State Road 135 and 144, soon home to a $7 million baseball and softball complex. Bargersville just rezoned the land, giving the green light for the development. Our hope is eventually we'll draw from all over the Midwest. The MVP sports complex will be tournament focused with eight ball diamonds. It will be all field turf, so we'll be able to do both baseball and softball. Um, then we'll have an indoor uh, complex looking at doing about 50,000 square feet right now. Better, better. This is a big deal for the community and really the surrounding communities that touch this area is a big deal for us. And a big deal for Bargersville. Hundreds of players and families and their spending cash expected for weekend tournaments. Lots of teams that come in from out of state and I think it'd be a good economic thing for them. Richardson says the next pitch may be a hotel in the area. We've already thought about it. <laughs> but for now. Two for two. He and these families are thrilled to build a new outdoor home close to home. Jenny Renovich reporting there. An MVP park is being paid for with private money. They'll break ground this summer, and the first few fields could be open next spring. The 10-point coalition has a new tool in its fight to keep kids off the streets. Coming up, the game-changing book they hope will scare troubled teens straight.
Eyewitness News at Sunrise continues. Good morning once again. Time is 9.30 on your Sunday and we are taking a live look at Indianapolis this morning. A little bit cloudy, but it should be a nice day outside. Temperatures, though, could stay in the 50s for today, which would be so nice. And the big question is, though, how much longer will this warm-up last? <laughs> Kelly Green, that's the big question you know, of the day. Hey, it landed over the weekend, right? True. So we got to take it while we can. Definitely some changes we'll push in later on tonight. So enjoy the warm temperatures while we have them well above average and certainly feeling more spring like. Yes, we do have a weather system off to our northwest that is moving in closer. The clouds are thickening up and here's a look from our Sharpsville camera from our weather bug network yesterday. A lot more snow in the ground, but we've seen a lot of melting going on over the past 24 hours in Nashville. Another cloudy look there, certainly a winter look, but definitely mild temperatures. Take a look at our weather bug network of temperatures. It's 49 degrees in Trafalgar right now, 47 in Noblesville, 48 degrees in Greensburg and 45 in Lafayette. And it's going to be a mild day as the warm southerly breezes continue and the cloud coverage remains, but we are tracking this next system that will bring us a chance of some rain a little bit later on today. In fact, future track here keeps us dry this morning, but brings in a chance of some rain mainly late this afternoon. But check out these temperatures climbing into the low 50s once again this afternoon. So we are going to see some changes arriving. I'll have the timing of rain as well as when those temperatures will tumble coming up in your SkyTrack 13 forecast. Naomi. Kelly, thank you. New on Sunrise, no one was injured after a car caught fire early this morning in a Lawrence neighborhood. Fire officials say it happened just after 2 this morning in the 6400 block of Titania Drive on the city's east side. A viewer shot this video of the SUV burning in the driveway. Investigators are now looking into what started that fire. Also new on Sunrise, two people were killed in a crash in Vermilion County. We're told it happened at the Brolettes Creek Bridge on State Road 163 near Blanford, Indiana. A pickup truck left the road, struck a guardrail, then hit a bridge abutment before launching into the air and slamming into an overhead bridge. Both passengers were ejected. 56-year-old Dennis Church died at the scene. His son, 24-year-old Dennis Church Jr., died at the hospital. Speed is considered to be a factor in that crash. A group that works in Indianapolis neighborhoods to stop violent crime is trying a new tactic, a message from teens to prisoners. The 10-point coalition just received a book written by prisoners from Pendleton's Corrections Facility. The book is called Prison is for Real. One of the writers is just 18 years old and serving a life sentence without parole. The book's authors hope the 10-point coalition will pass out copies to the young men they're meeting on their patrols in some of the city's most crime-ridden areas. These kids really don't understand. This is not television. Uh, this is not a fairy tale. This is not a video game um, that these kids are, are, are playing. When you commit uh, the kind of crimes that they're committing, this is real life, and, and these are the... Uh, the consequences of, of that kind of behavior, and I think we need to share this with these kids. Reverend Harrison and the 10-point members plan to make at least 100 copies of the book and start passing them out next week. We are learning more this morning about the father and teenage daughter murdered in Hartford City. The Blackford County Coroner tells the Muncie Star Press that 40-year-old Shane Williamson had been shot several times and 14-year-old Caitlin Williamson died from a single gunshot wound to the head. The shootings happened Thursday at the Hartford Square Apartments. Police have an unnamed person of interest in custody at the Jay County Jail. The man who sued after he was pushed over in his wheelchair by a Lafayette police officer is making new allegations in the case. Nicholas Kincaid sued the city and Lieutenant Tom Davidson after a police car dash cam captured the incident in October of 2013. The Lafayette Journal Courier reports an amended complaint filed in federal court this week. It claims Lafayette police lacked training and says the city failed to punish misbehaving officers. The city's attorney says Lafayette will deny those allegations. A Richmond hospital is asking collection agencies to call back letters sent prematurely to patients for unpaid bills. 
Reed Hospital is apologizing to patients about the letters received in January from Finance System and United Collection. The hospital says many patients did not get the standard series of three monthly bills that they usually get before collections get involved. If you live in the southern third of Indiana and tried to make a phone call this weekend, you might have heard this. It is now necessary to dial the area code plus the number to complete this call. Starting yesterday, people in the 812 area code now need to dial 10 digits, even for local calls. Service providers will use 930 as the area code for new numbers starting on March 7th. Some people may have been caught off guard by the change, but others have been preparing. The 317 area code is expected to run out of numbers in 2017. State officials are already working on a plan to start a new area code here as well. An Indiana native that has captured the hearts of the country with her battle against terminal brain cancer is celebrating another achievement this morning. You can now call her Dr. Lauren Hill. We have a picture of her accepting her honorary degree. There it is from Mount St. Joseph University. The 19-year-old Lawrenceburg native has a rare inoperable form of cancer. She's become an advocate for awareness and research to find a cure. And we've certainly been following her story and wishing her well. I know she struggled a lot, but it seems like every day we're hearing a new moment of achievement for her. And Kelly, uh, the weather today will be another wonderful day, but it won't last forever as we all know. Right, and we are going to see more clouds than yesterday. We did enjoy a lot of sunshine yesterday. The southerly breezes continue and the mild temperatures are here, but notice off to our northwest, we do have Davenport at 33, Chicago down to 35. That colder air will begin to move in. I'll have the details coming up on sunrise. And Brian Williams steps away from the nightly news desk when he's expected to be back and who's taking over in the meantime. This is breaking news from Channel 13 Eyewitness News. That breaking news now, legendary North.
This is breaking news from Channel 13 Eyewitness News. And that breaking news, legendary North Carolina basketball coach Dean Smith has died. Smith was the head coach of the Tar Heels from 1961 to 1997, leading the program to national championships in 1982 and 1993, 13 ACC tournament titles, 11 Final Fours, and an NIT championship. He also coached the U.S. Olympic team to a gold medal at the 1976 Summer Games. Smith passed away peacefully last night at his home in Chapel Hill, surrounded by his wife and five children. Dean Smith was 83 years old. Police say paparazzi were following Olympic gold medalist and reality star Bruce Jenner when he got into a four-car crash that killed a woman in California. Investigators say Jenner was aware of the tabloid photographers but wasn't trying to get away from them. Jenner was not hurt. But one woman was killed and seven other, other people were injured. The crash comes during reports that the Kardashian family patriarch is transitioning to become a woman. As Bobby Christina Brown continues to fight for her life in an Atlanta hospital, police are now launching a criminal investigation. The 21-year-old was found unresponsive in her bathtub a week ago. Investigators now believe she was injured before the bathtub incident. The investigation is centered on Brown's boyfriend, Nick Gordon, who discovered Brown along with a friend. Brian Williams has announced that he is taking some time off from NBC Nightly News. In a note on NBC's website, Williams said he is temporarily taking himself off the daily broadcast for the next several days. He says it's become painfully apparent that his actions have made him too much a part of the news. Williams recently apologized for falsely saying on air that he was in a helicopter hit by a grenade while in Iraq in 2003. If you lost something decades ago, would you think you might ever find it again? It's exactly what happened to one man 22 years after his class ring slipped off his finger in a Nashville, Indiana lumberyard. Kurt Altman now has that ring back. There it is. Decades ago, a nine-year-old boy in Brown County found it and gave it to his mom. That woman, Beth Ham, put it in a drawer but always hoped to find its owner. So recently, when she came across it, the legally blind woman asked her husband to do some research online. Then she mailed a letter to the man who lost it while he was living in Brown County 22 years ago. Oh, I was going through my drawer again. I come across it, and I thought with technology the way it is now, you know, I told my husband, I said, won't you try to Google this guy's name? That's one amazing thing about it, that she went through the effort, you know, she didn't pawn the ring off, she could have done that or sold it silver and it was she was just a good hearted person that wanted to make sure that I got a piece of uh, my life of high school back so that was totally awesome that she did that Sure was. Kurt now lives in Chicago. He says the ring is in pristine condition, just like it was during his senior year at Thorntown High School in Illinois. He tells us he'll be much more careful with the ring now that he has it back. Still such a cool story. What are the chances? I know. 22 years later. Wow, very That's cool. crazy. And she just said, Google it. <laughs> just Google it. Just You'll Google find it. him. And sure enough, they did. Yep. Well, today's weather will be beautiful just like yesterday, but we have changes in store. Right. Not as much sunshine today. It will still be mild for this time of year. I mean, this is February the 8th, and normally we are tracking temperatures in the mid-30s. But uh, it has been pretty breezy. And taking a look at some of the recent wind gusts from our Weather Bug Network, you can see we've had a wind gust of 32 miles per hour in Trafalgar, 25 mile per hour winds in Lafayette, and Seymour with a 28 mile per hour wind gust. Here's a look at Kokomo, a lot of overcast skies, but a lot of that snow melted yesterday and continues to melt this morning from our Noblesville cam, another cloudy sky here as well, but gosh, it is definitely very mild all across central Indiana. Temperatures really didn't fall off much this morning at all. Still 45 degrees in Kokomo, 49 in Indianapolis, 51 in Bloomington, 54 degrees in Seymour. 
We do have a little break in the clouds right now from our HD Sky Cam downtown Indianapolis. It is currently 49 degrees. Winds are out of the southwest at 14 miles per hour. So that sustained wind as well as those winds out of the southwest has helped allow that mild air to filter in. Average high for today is right around 38 degrees. We're not going to be breaking any records today. The record was set back in 1937 of 68 degrees, but we're still going to be well above average, more than 10 degrees above average for this time of year, and temperatures will tumble starting tomorrow. So I'll get into that temperature crash in just a moment, but let's take a look here at our satellite radar. It is dry right now, but the clouds have certainly thickened up. We're watching out for this next area of low pressure to our northwest. As you can see, it is bringing in some light rain, possibly even some freezing rain in some locations in Iowa and in Wisconsin. So that is going to be moving our direction. This low pressure, we have that counterclockwise flow with lows, and that is allowing that warm southerly breeze on the front side of that system. Of course, when the back side of that system moves in, we'll see winds out of the north. But in the meantime, a mild day on tap with these clouds this morning, dry this morning, and then as we head into the afternoon, we do have some chances of some rain. Temperatures, though, will be climbing back into the low 50s this afternoon with those winds out of the west, southwest from about 5 to 15 miles per hour. Better chances of rain later in the afternoon, and really the best chance of rain is going to be in our south central viewing area. So keep that in mind. Now, if we do have any leftover precipitation though later tonight, we could see that transition from rain to snow. So that definitely is something to be concerned about. So check back with Sean tonight and again with Chuck and Nicole tomorrow morning. Temperatures fall to 28 degrees with the potential of a rain snow mix. It will be breezy tonight as well, and then temperatures start to fall. We only have a high of 34 degrees on Monday, actually running a few degrees below average. Dry and sunny for Tuesday, but we're tracking a chance of rain on Wednesday with a high near 40 degrees. Much colder again for Thursday and Friday as we head into the weekend. Now, Eyewitness Sports. Good morning. Columbus North basketball standout Josh Spidell remains in critical but stable condition nearly a week after he was involved in a serious car accident in Bartholomew County. While he continues to battle on a bed at IU Health Methodist Hospital, his team and the community continues to support him. Josh, what's up, man? It's Paul George. You know, we're praying for you here. Stay strong. I hope you can fight through it. I know you'll get back healthy. Josh Strong continues to be in, uh, the inspiration and for his team and for Central Indiana. The Pacers with a video tribute to Spidell. Third game of the Hoosier Invitational yesterday, Columbus North and East Central over at the Field House. Matt Schumann with the bucket there. This one would go back and forth, tied after one. The three would keep Columbus in it, but the Trojans executing in crunch time. East Central hands the Bulldogs the third straight loss, 58-56. Just one month remains in the Big East season. We still have no idea who will win the regular season crown. The Butler Bulldogs came into the weekend tied with Providence for second in the conference. A half game up on Georgetown and a half game back of Villanova. Four teams each with a legitimate shot with the Big East crown in sight. Butler needed to knock off the ball to keep pace at the top of the Big East. Alex Barlow, one of the best defenders in the conference. Still pitch ahead to Cam Woods. He throws it down. Butler up seven in the first half. Kellen Dunham. One of the better scores in the conference, one of the better scores for the dogs this season. Team high 24 points, four three pointers. Butler up 19 at the break. Second half, the Blue Demons put together a run of their own, cutting the Butler lead to five. Roosevelt Jones ends the rally right there and one. 20 for him. Butler wins it fifth straight. 83 73. Big reason for the W yesterday, the play of the Elder Seasons. This time of year, um, in a lot of cases, if your team's ready to play, it's really because of your older guys. It really is. You know, if they're not ready to play, you know, it's probably the coach should take some responsibility for that and, and the older guys. But if they're ready to play, most times it's your older guys that have, that have uh, made the group prepare the right way and have the right approach and right mindset. And I think we were ready to play. There's no place like home in the Big Ten. The top six schools have combined to lose just three home games in conference play. Purdue, while well, the Boilermakers are tied for second in B1G, five of their seven conference wins coming at Mackey Arena. Purdue two and two on the road, and guess what? At Minnesota yesterday. Andrew Hammonds, dominant for the Boilermakers throughout their four-game win streak. Throws it down, authority and one. 
Go ahead and dap the boys up to play like that. But do up four at the break. Gophers put together a massive second half run. Open up a double digit lead. John Ockes helps cut that lead. Less than a minute to go. Boilermakers down two. Coach Painter drew this up. Perfect shot for Kendall Stevens. Except for it's blocked. Coach Painter thinks a foul should be called. Clearly, they disagree there. And Purdue loses for the first time in nearly two weeks. Final 62-58. The University of Indianapolis opened the season 17 straight wins. Lost their last two. Hall of Fame weekend. Greyhounds hosting Maryville getting back to the winning ways. Joe Lawson, Washington high product. Game high 20. Time running out right before the half. Lucas Barker to Eric Davidson. Good. His fourth three-pointer of the half. You Indy up nine at the break. Second half, they run away with it. Two game skid over University of Indianapolis wins it. Final of this one, 77-50. Still to come, a big day today. IU and the Indiana Pacers both in action. We will have highlights and reaction coming up at 6 and on the Sports Jam. Jason, thank you. Beautiful day out there. Nice enough to get out and do some chores this Sunday morning, but things will change. Kelly tells us about some rain coming to the area. That's coming up in our final forecast. For Valentine's Day, roses are nice. Let's hope it will be weather-wise. I'm Matt McCutcheon. After five inches of snow last Valentine's Day, some businesses say they still expect to be down as much as 20%. I'll explain why Valentine's won't be so sweet for them coming up next. Welcome back. Love is in the air. Valentine's Day now less than a week away. And whether or not you've been hit with Cupid's bow, it certainly hits business and our economy. Sunrise reporter Matt McCutcheon joins us live from Mass Ave with that story and what the weather has to do with it all. Matt. 
Naomi, good morning. Love it or hate it, singled or partnered, at the end of the day, Valentine's Day is a multi-million dollar business, and businesses here along Mass Avenue, like Mesh, for example, expect to be pretty busy this Valentine's Day. In fact, they are booked for the night. They even have a waiting list. This is all welcome news after a dramatically different story last Valentine's Day. You may remember this, nearly five inches of snow that fell all across central Indiana pretty fast and furious as Friday, Valentine's Day 2014 afternoon, impacting that evening rush hour. That put a real damper on business mesh, so they were down 8% last year. They had about an 8% cancellation rate. Florists, this is their Super Bowl. They also reported struggles getting orders filled and out the door on time, as well as people coming in after work to pick up flowers. Everyone hoping for a much better weather story this year. This year I'm expecting sunshine. <laughs> I, I feel that we deserve sunshine after last year. Um, but, you know, it's hard to guess. It's hard to judge because it literally can be like this. And within an hour it can totally drop. The bottom can drop out. And of course, well, we all hope that won't be the case. Florists say they expect business to be down 20% because Valentine's is on Saturday this year. They say there's more hype to get those flowers rushed to the office of your loved ones. So that's why they actually say Wednesday is the best day for them to have Valentine's. As for businesses here like Mesh, for example, well, they expect to be pretty busy on Saturday. They say it's actually better for them for Valentine's to be on Sunday. That way everyone will want to go out Friday, Saturday, and keep that momentum going through Sunday. Reporting live, Matt McCutcheon, Channel 13 Eyewitness News. Matt, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Well, the famous Westminster Dog Show is just about a week away, but before the best in show is crowned, you can see some top dogs right here in Indy. Today is the final day of the Hoosier Kennel Club's Winter Classic. The dogs are evaluated in part on their frame, muscle, tone, and hair. Competitors say it takes true love of animals to show off their dogs across the country. The dog show continues today from 8 to 5 at the state fairgrounds. Tickets are $7. Kids 12 and under get in for free. Well, we may be a long way from summer, but we're told there's going to be a pretty rockin' pool party in Hamilton County today. Yes, a pool party. The Goldfish Swim School in Fishers is hosting a free pool party today. From noon until 4, families can enjoy an open swim and take a tour of the new facility. There will also be food, games, crafts, a photo booth, door prizes, and a name a turtle contest. Pretty cool. Well, if a warm indoor swim isn't for you, you can also take the polar plunge tomorrow night before the Pacers game to support Special Olympics of Indiana. We have some video here of the polar plunge at Butler from a week ago. The Pacers and the Fever are joining the cause with a plunge of their own. It happens at 6 tomorrow night in the Oberlot next to the Field House. So today would have been a beautiful day for something like that. Tomorrow starts to drop. Much chillier, definitely. Yep. We're going to see those temperatures crashing. It's short-lived, but it definitely a mild weekend, and we're still very mild right now. At 51 degrees in Indianapolis, 46 in Kokomo, 53 in Bloomington. Check out Seymour. 55 degrees. This afternoon, we do have a chance of some scattered showers, a tenth, possibly two tenths of an inch of rain. Not everyone will see rain and temperatures climb into the low 50s across most of central Indiana. And then we start to fall down to around 28 degrees Monday morning. We could see a bit of a wintry mix tonight into tomorrow morning. The moral of the story, enjoy your day today because winter returns coming soon. Thank you so much for joining us today on Sunrise. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.